A few years ago, I bought a pair of hiking boots from Amazon. It was the first time I'd bought shoes like that online. I'd bought shoes for work, but it's not quite the same thing. They only need to fit and look decent. Hiking shoes need to feel good and have support. The function is much more important than how they look, so I was a bit sketchy. But I lucked out and they fit perfectly. Not only did they fit perfectly, but they felt really good and they lasted a long time. I've had them for over three years and I don't know how many miles I've walked in these shoes. I was so excited to buy another pair, so I went into my past orders to buy them again, but they were discontinued. I decided not to push my luck, so I went to a local sporting goods store. They have a pretty huge selection of hiking boots, so I figured I'd start from there. I feel kind of guilty about doing this, of wasting their time if I'm only going to go home and buy it online, so I wasn't sure what my plan was. I was just kind of looking at all the shoes, maybe hoping I'd see my brand, and some woman came up to me. She seemed very friendly and asked me if I liked to hike. I said I did, but since I was new to the area, I didn't know much about local hiking trails. I explained my dilemma to her and she agreed it was tough buying hiking shoes online. I asked her if she went hiking off and maybe hoping to ease into some kind of get together and she smiled and said she belonged to a special hiking group, a special hiking and camping group. I asked what she meant and she asked me if I ever meditated. I told her I did sometimes but not as a habit that I do other mental exercises. She smiled and nodded as if she knew exactly what I was talking about. She said the mind is an amazing thing. I agreed. She told me her group is very exclusive and it is always looking for new members but it's very hard to pass both qualifying tests. It sounded like she was winding me up to pitch some kind of expensive network marketing group but as soon as I thought that she said she wasn't trying to sell me anything. She said every couple of years they invite a group somewhere in the Rocky Mountains. They have to be in decent physical shape. They have to be able to get away for at least a week without much notice and they have to be patient enough and trusting enough to pass the first wave waiting test. The first waiting test comes when they get to a large cabin. Everything is provided for. They just have to be able to sit and meditate for three days without getting nervous or anxious. Those that make it that far are called to the inner circle. They come and lead the chosen away during the night. The ones that aren't accepted are led back to their cars the next day. The chosen are led to a much higher elevation. They are led up at night so they don't remember where it is. They need to keep the location as secret as possible. Once they get there, they sit and meditate again in this meadow that is over 10,000 feet in elevation. They have to do this outside so they can only do this late in spring or in the summer. The meadow has been carefully cultivated with plants that aren't indigenous. Some of the plants come from the Himalayas and some have been specifically engineered for this purpose. The plants emit a kind of pheromone, each one slightly different. The effect happens when you breathe in this mix of pheromones at the high elevation. The effect is profound and life-changing. According to quantum physics and particle physics, nature exists as several energy fields interacting with one another. The gravitational field, the nuclear fields, the electromagnetic field, the quantum field and the Higgs field. How these fields interact with one another gives rise to energy waves and what we call particles. But the particles are really tightly compacted energy waves. Most people are aware of the duality of the photon. The photon is the particle that arises from the electromagnetic field. Sometimes this field is expressed in waves. Sometimes this field is expressed in particles. According to this group, there is also a consciousness field. The consciousness field is the aspect of these energy fields that is capable of being aware of itself. Most of us experience consciousness as being ourselves, a separate identity to the rest of the consciousness particles. But much like photons, which can be particles or waves, we can be consciousness particles as we experience ourselves in our physical bodies, or we can return to the consciousness field where we experience all there is. She explained that after ingesting these pheromones at that high altitude, you can experience brief moments in that pure consciousness energy field. That just one moment in the energy field feels like an eternity of pure bliss. A bliss so powerful it cannot be described with human language. This is why they are so careful who they let into this inner group. I asked her how one can be allowed to participate. She told me they'll be watching me. She said that you've already been pre-selected since you are listening to these words now. That we've been watching you for some time. That these words represent the first contact. That we will be paying close attention to your thoughts, especially when you dream. Your thoughts are easily manipulated by forces around you, but your dreams represent the purity of who you are. 
If you sense any kind of spirit guides coming to you in your dreams, be open to them, trust them, follow their advice and guidance. They will lead you to find out more about us. Because you are listening to these words now, you will be hearing from us in spirit form in your dreams in the near future. It might be a good idea to keep a dream journal and write down and follow up on any insights you think during dreams or even during the day. She smiled, reached out, and briefly touched my arm. In that brief instant where we had skin-to-skin -skin contact, I suddenly felt a momentary vanishing of all fear and anxiety. It was as if I was able to release all fears, that I could forget all anxiety, that I could remember the truth. I looked down and I was holding a pair of hiking boots that looked exactly like the ones I used to have. I found a staff member and asked them and they verified this. I don't remember picking them up, but they were the last pair and they were on closeout. I only paid about 20% of the normal price. And that's how I got my new hiking shoes. I want to sleep and dream, but I'm too excited.